about 20 years? On average, uh, I'd say years. I don't know how many years, but years. <laughs> it takes a while. I mean, it's not something that you can just go out and get. It takes hard work, dedication, and time, and focus, and a lot of discipline, too. I'd say about three, four years. I'd say about three to five years. Too long. Probably like 20 years, maybe. I'd say about 40 years. It depends. If I get out of college and I'm an anesthesiologist, then maybe a few years. I don't think it takes any certain amount of years. I think it's just where your position is in life or how well you do in your job. Or I guess if you win the lottery, it'd take about a week. A long time. You have to work really hard to be a millionaire. Anyone in America can be a millionaire. That's a bold statement. But I'll tell you this, it takes an average of 17 years, and 80% of America's millionaires today, that's 8 out of 10 of them, are first-generation rich. They started with nothing and built their wealth over time. It's a steady, consistent application of the principles that we teach, budgeting, paying cash, and staying out of debt. The typical millionaire goes unnoticed in America. No one knows who they are. They're not athletes. They're not from Hollywood. They don't have some special skill. The only skill they have is that of perseverance. They never Never quit. It's as simple as that. You could do that, couldn't you? The rate of return of the interest rate that you get on your money is very, very important as well. Something to look at. See, here's an example of that. If you take $1,000 and you put it in the bank and you made 6% on your money and you put it in there at age 25 and you let that compound interest work, you come back 40 years later at 6%, that $1,000 will be $10,000. If you double the rate of return from 6 to 12%, it doesn't double the results, does it? Because compound interest is a mathematical explosion. We don't go from 10 to 20. We go from 10,000 to $93,000. And when you triple it, and you go from 6 to 12 to 18, it goes from 10 to 93, and you made 18% on your money, you'd have $750,000. Dave, you can't get 18% on your money. You know that. Well, I sort of do. I've got several mutual funds that have averaged over that for 20 years. I really don't think that's a reasonable amount to expect in the coming years. And I don't run my calculations for my future based on 18%, but I've actually owned some conservative investments that have done that. We'll talk about that in another lesson. But I have found a place where you really can get 18% on your money. It's um, <laughs> called plastic surgery. Because mathematically, not paying out 18% is suspiciously like receiving it. <laughs> you see, what happens to us is this. We, you know, we take the $1,000 down to the bank, and we open up a bank account. And as we do that, we put the key in the engine of the most sophisticated and well-funded marketing machine ever known to man, and we start the machine. The machine is called the financial institution. They spend more money selling their product and are more sophisticated at selling their product than any other industry. They are absolutely professional marketers. They are very, very good at what they do. So if you go open a savings account, by the time you get home, in your mailbox is one of these, isn't it? <laughs> and it's in there and it's like, got a little letter in there that says, welcome to the family. We want to build a relationship with you. And, and I got that thing out and I read it and it said 18%. And I went, nobody borrows money at 18%. That'd be stupid. I'm not going into debt at 18%. I was in my 20s and I told my wife, I said, honey, got this stupid credit card at 18%. We don't need the thing. But I'm going to put it right here just in case there's an... Oh no, you did it too. And we're sitting there doing the bills one week and there's sweat on the upper lip and we're fighting and we're not going to make it and we're going, okay, honey, I got a plan. We'll eat every other week. <laughs> we're just barely making it. You know, all the money comes in, all the money goes out, only the names are changed to protect the innocent. Anybody been there but me? You know what I'm saying? And Monday morning we mail all the bills out and then they're out there floating around in the mail and about Thursday I go to start the car and the car won't start. It's got a bumper sticker on it that says, I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. <laughs> I've got to have the car to get to work. I mean, how am I going to get to work to pay these bills if I don't have the car? A stupid car won't start. It's a $422 alternator. So we take the Tahoe down to the mechanic, 
Turns out he's not a nonprofit ministry. <laughs> he actually wanted to get paid. We said, well, just this once, we're going to fix the car, because who knew the car was going to break? <laughs> and we're going to put it on this thing, because this is an... Emergency. Yeah. And we're sitting there about August, and, and the kids come in the house kind of like this. Dad? <laughs> Dad? Dad, Dad, we're getting ready to go back to school, and Dad, this is a problem. <laughs> Dad, we're either going to have to buy clothes or you're going to have to pay for counseling. <laughs> and we're going, oh no, the children grew. Who knew this was going to happen? <laughs> so we go down to Target, that fine French store, <laughs> and take care of our children and buy them clothing, because they surprised us by growing. We have no money, and so we put it on this, because this is an emergency. emergency. I'm sitting there in November eating my Thanksgiving dinner, and about halfway through it, I almost choke on my turkey. Because <laughs> I suddenly realized that this year Christmas is in December. amazing how Christmas sneaks up on us like they move it or something. It's always there. It's not a shock. That's where it is. It's December. Why is this a shock? And then we get all stupid, right? Oh, we have to get little Johnny some plastic stuff. We have to run down to Toys R Them and get some plastic stuff for little Johnny. Because little Johnny's little self-esteem will be damaged if he doesn't get some plastic stuff. And if his little self-esteem is damaged, he will kill 87 people with an axe. And he'll, he'll be in the, in the prison, and the prison psychologist say, Little Johnny, why did you kill 87 people with an axe? He said, because I didn't get an Elmo when I was four. <laughs> and it'd be all my fault. And this is how parents think. And the kid's going, I just wanted an Elmo. <laughs> and so we go down to the mall with no money to buy presents for people we don't really like. And 68% of you, that's 7 out of 10 of you, while you were down there shopping with no money for people you didn't like, bought yourself a gift. <laughs> Just because they might forget, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and what we do, we put it, we put it on this thing because we didn't know Christmas was coming. So it's in... So we're sitting there in February, the bill comes, there's $1,000 on the visa bill. We yell through the house at our spouse, get in here. <laughs> Who put $1,000 on the visa? We were not going to use the visa. And your spouse goes, uh, that would be you. <laughs> and you're going, wasn't me, it was you. And you have a good visa fight. <laughs> And if you have a really good one, you do a full audit on the thing to see who caused the problem. <laughs> and when you do this, you will discover not that you bought a really nice HDTV, not that you bought a rosewood dining room set or went to Hawaii. You will discover that life happened without a plan and Visa caught your slack. Guess who had a plan? Visa. <laughs> Think about it. Here's what we really did, folks. We really took $1,000 of our money, and we took it down to the bank, and we loaned it to the bank at 6% if we got a really good account. And then they loaned us our $1,000 back at 18%. Now, that's a bargain. <laughs> that's how banks make money. Now, I'm not mad at banks, but when I really got stopped and started thinking about this, I thought, you know what, that's stupid. This isn't working. Because if you look real carefully at this chart, over 6% there, it, it, it really doesn't represent a little red bar. It really looks more like your house. And that big one over 18 looks more like their building. <laughs> so when Sharon and I discovered this, we said, uh-uh, we're not playing anymore. I don't like the game. It's not win-win. It's they win, I lose. I'm out. No, thank you. saying in short is this if the water in this cup represents money we need to put some money in the savings cup if we save money for emergencies and there's an emergency we just fix the car right it's not a problem 
If we save money for retirement and we get ready to retire and we want to do that with dignity, we just retire with dignity. If we save money and we want to buy something really nice like a leather couch or a boat or something that you really want, you save up and pay for it, you write a check, you give them cash, whatever. You can save money for your kid's college and then they wouldn't graduate like most college seniors will graduate this year with tens of thousands of dollars in student loan debt. But we don't put enough money in this cup. Many people put, as we said, no money in this cup. Instead, we have the tendency to use this cup, the spending cup. And we didn't tend to put all of our money in there so that there's not any. And the problem is when you do this, that when you put all your money in the spending cup, that it's gone. <laughs> so by now you understand that saving is a crucial part of handling your money. After all, that's why it's your first foundation. We typically save for three reasons. Emergencies big purchases, and to build wealth. First up, emergencies. As you know, high school students should have $500 set aside just in case of an emergency, like if your car breaks down or you have to get a new cell phone. The second reason we save is for big purchases, like a prom dress, your first car, in college. When the time comes to buy, having the money ready is such a good feeling. One of the most gratifying things you can do is to purchase something big with your own hard-earned cash. The third reason we save is to build wealth. Remember how we said that your income is your largest wealth building tool? It's a powerful thing when you put it to work. By starting early, you can retire with dignity, with plenty of money to have fun, take care of your family, and bless others.